Thank you, everyone. I hope that everyone is able to hear me, even people at the end. Great. We do have quite many applications we are using every day. I would say that I usually use about 50, including the ones that are on the phone that we always uh, we quite often forget. But this, the, the question is, do you really know what they are doing? What the applications you have installed on all your machine, linked with hundreds of libraries, maybe not hundreds, but 10 libraries linked with a program that would, I would say it's pretty normal. Do you really know what happens when you run your application? I would say, from my experience done with the research for and development for this project, that no, I would say that you don't know. <laughs> but why would you like to know what the application is doing? I will start from asking you a personal question. How many of you happen to do debugging at least once a week? Raise your hand. Okay, quite many of you. Uh, how many of you do like debugging? Okay, the, I, 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 was ex I was expecting that there will be less of you, but great. But still, you, I, 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 I am a fan of you, but because personally, I don't like debugging. I prefer to add new things to my programs than to, than to debug them. However, the research shows us that a typical developer spends between 50 and 70% of their time debugging the application. The debugging, in fact, what they understand is debugging itself, writing tests, maintaining code, all the, those kinds of activities. I guess that with your experience with different projects, you would say that it's mostly true if you really count count the hours you spend uh, with your project. What it means that if we try to find out a way to limit the time we spend on debugging, uh, we are going to gain a lot of time to add new functionalities, to work on other things that just debugging. And we have, as it's 50% of the time, we have way much to gain there. To make the things even more complicated, I'm concentrating myself on complicated program programs. What I mean by complicated programs, those that communicate either with other programs running on the same machine, those that are talking by network, that are communicating with devices, be it in embedded in IoT or on desktop. I would say that most applications we write those days are those complicated applications. And we do have interaction of this application with the external world, and the external world is influencing the way our application behaves. Or at least not the external world, but the part of the world that we haven't written ourselves. A, a reminder from uh, your classes on uh, software quality, what we can do to limit debugging. There's a, the process part, so issue tracking, code reviews, testing, but also the party of tools. Tools, so you, the daily use of debugger, the traces, if you are a little, little deeper, Benchmarks, if you are into performance, to find out how your application behaves with time and with your changes, and the advanced tools that you may use. Tools. There are tools for different purposes. And as, a, as, uh, as, uh, as, an, as an engineer, we choose the right tool for the right task. And I will give you a short overview of the advanced tools you can use to debug a complicated application. First, if I want to 
understand the network connection of my application, what I use is Wireshark. Wireshark allows you to see all the network packets that are transmitted or received uh, from your application. The small difficulty may be that to understand the results, you have to understand the network protocols. You have to have the basic understanding of how the protocols behave, how the protocols should behave in the case of the application, and what could go wrong. So, for, for many protocols, you can have, you, you can find um, the analyzers that just dump the data that is being transferred. But for some more complicated cases, you will have to go and look into the, the, um, the specification of the protocol or have, have, have the knowledge uh, from other sources. If you want to know how the application is interacting with the Linux kernel in this case, what you can use is the trace program. What it gives, it gives you all the system calls that are being called with the arguments and with the results. That is very detailed, this is very detailed information, very useful. Uh, the disadvantage Big, first big advantage is the size of the output you get. Even this is not a complete output of LS. It just wouldn't fit on a slide. Even of a 10 slides, it wouldn't fit. And you also have to understand what is happening with all those uh, Cisco's. You have to understand what they do and why they are called in that, in that way. Understand the parameters they are passed. Understand the, the, uh, the written values. If you want to know what happens on the inside of your application, you can use Perf. Perf is even more, if it's different kind of a tool, but very, very powerful. Here you have a, an example, uh, an example output of Perf that is recording context switches for an application. Extremely useful in many cases. Uh, I won't be talking much about the Perf because it's values a separate presentation, or maybe a several ones. In fact, there's one later today I found out in the program. So if you're interested in Perf, you can, uh, you, you can learn much about this and about the things that Perf can do for you. However, I'm a kernel hacker, so I know the syscalls, I have networking background, so I read the hex dumps of the network protocols. Uh, but, not everyone does, and it's not the most efficient way to debug a program. So I started to think how to optimize my time and the time of other people. Uh, what we can do uh, to use the super advanced tools that can give you great results, that give you enormous amount of information about your tools but you have to be able to use them. So what, what we can do? And I, st I started looking into the problem, and what I, what I found out that what we really need is a layer of tools and documentation that will take the output of the tools that already give us everything and will show we extract and show you just the information you need. There will be probably need of some uh, tutorials on application or example applications. And I, I wanted to test if it, if, if that idea is going to work. And I, and I wrote an, an example first analysis application. You have you can see two eggs, the red one and the orange one. They look more or less the same from the, from the external. Just the color is different. But you don't know what's inside. What I'm going to, to tell you, to you here, what I wrote is an, is, an, is an app that allows you to compare two executions of the same program.
So what can it compare? It compare the accesses to, to files, the network, the communication with all other services, and any other systems call. What I'm using is the trace, um, the trace, uh, the trace output. Now, why would you do, want to do that? Well, there are quite many reasons. You can have an you can have a known condition when the application is behaving correctly and known condition when the application behaves incorrectly. You can have different versions of software installed machine. That's the reason you may have made an upgrade of your system and then the application doesn't work anymore. You have different machines. You may want to see for performance reasons if you change something in the system, what happens with the application, why it behaves differently. And for, 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 for debugging, you do a change, it behaves differently, you want to find out how it's interacting with, uh, with, with its world. And finally, for security reasons, if you do have a golden copy of the execution trace, you may be able to see if there has been some malware installed inside, inside of your application, if the, the behavior hasn't changed during, in the time. Now I will show you the, the user interface of a program that you should know. Oh, where are you? The KCalc, you probably have seen on the Synap a similar program. What I did and I, is I started uh, to trace what KCalc is doing. And what we do have with two different execution of it is that we have a bunch of directories it's using. The library, the system uh, Qt and KD libraries, nothing extraordinary. We would probably expect that it's using it. It is opening quite many things in TMP and uh, in VAR2. But I found out that there is a difference. I show, I'm showing in red the difference between two executions, that one of the executions was using the view random and the other wasn't. And that was happening when I opened the setting, uh, setting window. That is, for some reason, by some low-level libraries, initializing the random number generator. I wasn't expecting to see that <laughs> in the program. <laughs> But it does, it does it. Uh, we have, we can see how many configuration font files the, the, the Qt is using at initialization. That was uh, also pretty, uh, pretty interesting to see. Uh, I have also another trace uh, with two different, uh, different machines when you have a very big difference between the two. So it was pretty fun to just to see what it happens in that small application. Uh. What I've learned, because I've learned a lot by writing this program. I've seen that there is enormous number of accesses to different system services from the libraries. And for some, it, I wanted to understand why they are there. What do they mean? And it took a little, a little digging around the, around the place to find out what it is. Some were unexpected from the, from the first sites. Some were quite, quite natural. Another interesting thing for me was that I wasn't aware that very advanced and new system calls in Linux added in the last year, they are really used by real applications. I knew that those syscalls exist, they have been added recently, and they really get used by the applications. That, uh, that, that was interesting, that means that, um, uh, that the, the new stuff is really being used. 
And I've seen big differences when running those tests on different machines. Even when I was running the same test on two different machines that were running the same distribution and this, more or less the same version of the same distribution. So those were linked just by the, uh, by, uh, uh, this, this was just linked to the, to the packages installed on the machine. That's how I started to understanding the problems that we often see on the, on the mailing list and bug reports. That someone runs an application, it doesn't work for them on a system that for someone else, it, it works, uh, it works very well. It's just that they, if you, if you look, uh, if you look, uh, into the libraries accessed in the file access, this is, there is a big difference in all those two. So I've learned a lot. I may write quite many other tools like that because it's pretty interesting. I would like to have your feedback which tools to understand your application better you would like to see. What do you would like to know more about your application? Send me an email later or ask me at the conference. I will be really glad to, to hear from you what your real problems with the, your real applications are. For the source code, I have just managed to push it today <laughs> by removing some big traces that were in my private repo. So you can, if you want to, to look around, you can get it from GitLab. It's, uh, it's GPL3, uh, the graphical interface written in uh, PyQt. That was also interesting to use. Uh, and you can, you can reach me by email on other means. Do we have any questions? Yeah? Okay. The question is, uh, what is the, what is the, what are the tools that I'm using, uh, for, for, for this, uh, for this development? The answer is that cur currently I'm basing myself on S trace, basically, for the, for the first part. Uh, I will be as adding a perf, uh, perf, um, perf measures too in the, in the, in the, in the future. The feature that is coming soon. Um, what, what I'm going forward is to have a, um, have a goal to have, don't, so have a, um, have an idea what I want to show and that from that get the, get the tools I need to and get the parameters, the options, the data I need to get from those tools. I'm not going to parse, uh, parse everything that is giving me the S trace uh, and perf on the application because of the, this is going to be extremely heavy, probably not useful, but I would rather prefer to have smaller tools that would just give you a small part of an overview, the, the directed, directed tool. Yeah? Okay, the question is uh, how flexible is the algorithm uh, of the comparison? At the beginning, it was, it was a proof of concept. I wanted to go fast. So I wrote the whole application in Python, even knowing that on the performance side, maybe it's not the, the best, uh, the best choice ever. Uh, what I found out that, um, use, uh, I was, I, I started using the, um, I, I wrote it in a pretty, pretty general way. Uh, there are attributes and fields. And, and then they are, they, they are sorted. So I'm, uh, I'm comparing the, the two sorted lists at the end with different attributes. Um, it's not exactly a diff. It's a, it's a data structure. 
And in fact, I found out that uh, even in Python, comparing in that way, it's fast enough. Uh, what happened when I when I launched the the demo? It has done the comparison online. That 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 wasn't an offline comparison. It, I had just the the complete S trace files on my disk, but the whole processing was done online, so it's fast enough. I told myself that I could uh, rewrite the engine later on in C, or I can try to interact with other engines that that are there. Mm, if I if I need that, currently uh, it's fast enough, so that's good. is open source, but wouldn't it make more sense to add a user interface to those programs that, that does exactly what you're trying to do with it, and it could then also be real-time, as opposed to that with effect uh, analysis? Okay. The question is, um, is it is it a better way to just add a user interface to, uh, to S-Trace or Perf? Um, as a side note, both S-Trace and Perf are completely open source projects. Uh, they are one of the basic tools that you can you can download for your um, for your system. Um, I don't know why there there is no uh, user uh, graphical user interface for Stray. I would expect the datos were never interested in writing one. Um, for Perf, there is some kind of graphical user interface. Uh, however, it's not that easy to write a graphical interface for Perf because of the amount of data and the amount of configurability it has. It's pretty complicated uh, to do it. Um, it. It may be one of the, uh, of the directions uh, to go forward because it would, be, it would be nice to have that too. Unrelated things that actually influence the uh, application, so page faults in one application, and then leading to scheduler data things. Yeah, uh, the question was uh, if I have looked into LTTNG. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, for the um, for the reason of time, I didn't prefer, uh, present you LTTNG, System Tap, and twenty other tools that you can use. That would be even more complicated to explain uh, what they do. Uh, the problem we have in the Linux world for me, that we have too many great tools. We can, we can get nearly all we want, uh, but you have to know which tool to use and at which time. And also it takes time to master each of them uh, because they work uh, they have their own particularities. So yes, LTTNG is one of the other sources uh, in there because it's also giving some other things that may be interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dan. And see you, see you later on the rest of the conference. <laughs>